if you have that passion, if you have that talent, pursue it. Yes. Don't stop. You're listening to The Johnny Pass Show, where I connect you to the most influential, masterful minds of this generation. We gain insight into their lives, their achievements, and the stories along the way. Stick around if you too are determined to succeed. Okay, guys, please welcome my guest. Now, she's been a personal friend for over 10 years. She's a fashionista, fashion director, events manager, and a very tenacious entrepreneur. Now, she runs one of the biggest global fashion shows in the world currently with House of Icons. That has successfully drawn in fantastic crowds in the thousands. To her independent shows, it's been growing and gaining momentum since its launch in September 2014. Now, her mission is to get House of Icons to be a global brand, known for launching emerging designers and creatives, working with global media partners, has enabled House of Icons shows to be aired worldwide to millions of viewers. And just finally, in addition to House of Icons London, it is held during the prestigious London Fashion Week. And also shows have taken place in Los Angeles, Beijing, Dubai, and Abu Dhabi. Please welcome my guest, Savita K. Woo. Hello. Well, what an intro. Thank you, Mr. Patch. How are you? Very well, very well. Just uh, as per usual, have been enjoying the sunshine just outside. Doing the work, of course, with the laptop, but uh, firmly getting my tan. How about yourself? Exactly the same, but with a large GNT next to the laptop while working. Good. So, you're uh... <laughs> you're having the podcast. Okay. Oh, dear. Interesting stuff there. Right. So, look, um, let's go down memory lane. Mm. So, known you for, I, I'd probably say about 10 years. Does that make you feel a bit old? It does me. Just a tad. <laughs> Just a tad, especially with the grey hairs that are popping out at the moment because I can't go to the hair salon. But yeah, just a tad. But you know, we, we, we've had a, a great um, uh, personal friendship and yeah. also a, a great business relationship. So, you know, um, I, I remember meeting you at, a, a, at one of the very first shows that I was head of production for backstage. And um, oh, it, 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 you were hosting that event as well, and, and we connected. And, um, and yeah, and then I um, asked you, please, 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 Johnny, can you please host my show when we launched in uh, September 2014? That's it. And you did a fabulous job. And then when we launched in Los Angeles in February 2015, you did a fabulous job then and all our other London shows as well. Well, look, uh, obviously a personal thank you for the, the whole LA show because that was the complete, that, that was the start of my LA dream, wasn't it? Do you want to tell the mm. uh, lovely listeners? Yeah, so basically, after the, uh, you know, I knew Johnny, you know, you would do a fabulous job anyway in our London show. So um, when a proposal was put on the table uh, to do House of Icons for the pre-Oscars event in February 2015, uh, the only person I could think of, the ch cheeky, you know, chappy that you are, uh, yeah. that gets the crowd going and, and, and interacts with them. You know, I insisted that we need Johnny Patch to, to host this in Los Angeles. Nobody else. I said, forget your presenters in L.A. Uh, we have to get, you know, Mr. Path, you know, to, to do the event. And you were absolutely fantastic. I mean, for the, you know, for this particular event in LA, I was sort of like mingling with the guests for a change because normally I'm backstage pulling all my hair out. The feedback was absolutely phenomenal. You you did a fan. Actually, we should reverse this. I should be interviewing you. You know, you did such an amazing oh, job. It was abs absolutely uh, brilliant. And one would say, Who, who's, who's that guy? Who's that guy? And I went, yeah, you know, brilliant TV presenter, live host from the United Kingdom. You there should be Privilege that you have, Mr. Patches. Savita. 
we obviously came up with the name The Passionator. I, I was going to mention that at the beginning, but I thought, oh, sh should I mention this? Yes, you really? label The Passionator. The Passionator. So he was never referred to as Johnny Patch. It was like The Passionator hosting. Yes, he is. Oh, fantastic. We love The Passionator. <laughs> so the, the, the reason why we, we called you The Passionator is, is purely the basis. You're such a lovely guy. You're very humble, very down to earth, you know? Thank you. One thing I can say about um, Johnny, um, to, to everyone who's listening, is He's very down to earth and humble. He has no arrogance, no nothing. I have known how hard this guy has grafted to get to where he is today. It, it's not been a, a joke. It's not been an easy ride. But he's always got a smile on his face. And he always has passion within his heart and soul. And anything, you know, you do, uh, you know, you're an inspiration to me as well. With great passion, you push forward. And hence the reason we labeled you the passionator. Because everything you do is with, from the heart, with pure passion. And oh. that's why you've done so well. I really like that. I kind of like, I, I had that emotional uh, twinge on my heart just then. It was like, oh, that's really nice. No, thanks a lot, mate. Like, obviously, that LA show was the whole catapult of, you know, myself moving out to LA because I think I mentioned to you before this, I did a, ma like, what was it? The 1st of January. I wasn't in a very good place where I was living. I literally drew a big picture of Hollywood working out mm. there a potential contract offer, sponsorship. I did the big Hollywood sign and it was my vision board and I kept looking at it and looking at it. And then literally five days later, you you called me up and you were like, look, they want you to the host the LA show. Are you going to come? And I was like, flipping heck, absolutely. So then what happens? We get out there. We absolutely nail the show. That guy Grant was in the, in the crowd from V Channel and he was like, look, we're looking for a British host. Can you come to the studio and audition and if you remember we were like I we remember. were going to go back and I mm. and I literally went there with my suitcase on the way to the airport mm. smashed the audition did an incredible job they they obviously wanted to sponsor me and I I was going back to the UK well the sponsorship well the visa application well should have gone ahead in three months but as you remember it took eight months mm. and then I did the final House of Icons show in September and then mm. I, I literally jetted off the week after to live in LA. And do you remember that show, that final show? I remember, I remember. My heart broke. I was so happy for you, but from a selfish point of view, I thought, I'm losing a friend. Uh -huh. Okay, I, I can always give him a ring when I'm in LA, but I'm still losing a friend. And oh my God, I'm losing one of my best hosts, you know. But I was so happy for you, you know, at, at the same time. I remember that show very well, September 2015, um, Fashion Week. We actually had you carried in by two security guards in a suit. <laughs> Suitcase. You're actually in the suitcase. We open up the suitcase and there you are. It's like, you know, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure you must remember, you know, when I said my thank yous and everything else. So while I was saying thank you and, and goodbye to you, my eyes were literally filling up with tears at the same oh. time. I thought, so, but you can't, your lashes are going to fall off, your makeup's going to get ruined, the makeup artist is going to kill you. They spent hours on that face. <laughs> oh, God, I've got to swallow the tears. And I, and I just kept stopping and pausing. But, you know, it, th that was a great fun show. And then Loved you it. then came back in September 2017 yeah, for our oh, London show. There you go. Like, obviously didn't quite work out it wasn't um you know wasn't what what I thought it would be and then mm. I came back which was with a bang yeah absolutely and look doesn't it I know that you're a very spiritual person yourself we both read the secret isn't that mm. crazy the whole law of attraction where I I did the vision board and then opportunities just started to materialize crazy right I totally believe in that ask believe and receive um you know I'm just like yourself I'm very spiritual as well you know if you send out all those good energy out there think the universe just will orchestrate to your tune and, and that that's what exactly what happened with yourself yeah definitely no no it's amazing times and we all we obviously forget to keep going on with that practice but hopefully mm. this, this conversation will uplift and get everybody doing the whole uh, secret in a way look let's get into it right so house of icons launched September 2014 for the listeners that do not know much about your platform please spread the word I will do. Actually, you're actually involved in this. So um, remember when we, um, I was head of production for London Fashion Week event. This was for September 2012. You hosted the actual event. So our paths have crossed and, and have been in parallel with each other since then. Yes. And when I was backstage on that very show, I actually asked all the designers, why are you doing this show? Why are you spending so much money? I, I come originally from a corporate banking background. So from a risk and compliance point of view. And I've always got, oh, you know, I don't want to take a risk here and looking at 
uh, contingency plans left, right and centre. So I questioned the design as if I was talking them out of it. And they all said in hope of being discovered, in hope of being photographed, in, right. you know, in hope someone writing an article and so on and so forth. I went, hmm, okay. So I was still in corporate banking. So I thought, right, I'm going to challenge myself. So I did my own little makeshift show. This was September 2013. This was just a challenge for myself. Yes. And um, it was called Angels of Fashion. Name never sat right with me from day one. But it was a good show for the creatives. But it was a test for me. And um, because I was also writing as well, um, um, you know, um, as a journalist covering various events, whether it be fashion, music, and political and current, of, current affairs, yeah. um, I contacted all my journal friends. And I'm like, oh, please, please, please. It was literally begging, Johnny. Please, please, please come support me. I need the support. Just turn up to the show. I'll give you free tickets. Sit wherever you want. I don't care. And because of that great relationship I had uh, with my fellow colleagues in, 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 the journal, uh, in journalism, they said, do you know what, Sophia? Don't worry. We're going to turn up. And do you know what? We are going to do some pre-press releases because we like you. I went, oh, okay. So I sent them the list of the designers and everything else so just give us a bit of a blurb what you're doing and yeah. we did so loads of pre-presses came out just before the uh, first show in September 2013 and you know it was a very small show I know I had invited you as one of my VIP guests as well mm. and um, from that show one designer got signed up to the house of Louis Vuitton as one of the in-house designers right. one of the other designers Yen I mean his outfits went to Rihanna went to Paris yeah. Hilton it went global it was the first designer from Abu Dhabi to showcase you know on, on international ground and um, he did extremely well too or three other designers actually sold off the runway and then that evening in the bar and you know there's a lot of alcohol involved where I'm concerned we're sitting in the bar thinking what just happened there I said I haven't got a Scooby-Doo and the pre-press releases really helped because we promoted these designers not weeks but months before the show yes and that's what captivated you know our audience our guests the media and press and there were, there were quite a lot of photographers that were there for my little you know first makeshift show you know we realized there was a massive gap in the market to promote um, the emerging creatives or the emerging designers at the time. Yeah. So my team said to me, they said, right, so this is your baby. What do you want to do now? And I, you know, I loved working in corporate banking, but as you know, with the financial crisis in 2008, 2009, yeah. the restructuring that was going on, it, it was just all going crazy. And unfortunately at the time, my uh, marriage was dissolving as well. And so I just need a clean break from everything. Yes. And, you know, to, to see and to help people through all their struggles to get somewhere or to get some form of recognition, I thought, this is what I want to do. So I took the bit, I took the biggest risk of my life and I said, right, that's it. Thank you and goodbye to corporate banking for 14 years. And, um, you know, my team said, right, the name, what are we going to call it? Uh -huh. So we couldn't think of a name. And I said, I want my designers to come home. I want them to feel comfortable. You know, we want to open up doors to them, not just here in UK, but around the world. We want to release the next generation, you know, of, of icons. You know, and I kept thinking of like, you know, like the Marilyn Monroe, Princess Diana, you know, Audrey Hepburn, all those icons were coming, you know, coming up in my head. And um, then the name House of Icons was then formed. So the icons are spelt with a small I and big K. Yeah. And the big K actually represents me. Now, yeah. that wasn't my idea. That was actually our late uh, ops uh, operations director, Benjamin Amore, who unfortunately passed away in 2016. Yeah, lovely. So he, he was a lovely guy, God bless him. And, and I, I just sat there and I was scratching my head. And I'm, why a big K? But, you know, in terms of spell check, he says, Savita, the big K represents you. I went, oh, okay. So that's why we spell icons the way, way, way we do, um, to highlight that. And also to highlight the fact, you know, bang, you know, you're going to be the next biggest icon. And also, you know, with his passing, that's my way of honoring and, and paying tribute to Ben as well. So it, it was it was quite a shock when he passed away in 2016. Yeah, wasn't it? A lo lovely guy. And yeah, it was a massive shock, wasn't mm. it? I mean, that whole thing I know has like massively spurred you on to just make mm. this show one of the biggest globally. And it really is getting to that point now. I mean, you've had, you've got some incredible designers. You've had mm. endorsements with many celebrities. It's getting bigger and better every single year. Like, you must be so proud with all of this. I still, you know, we're still, a very 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 small drop in the ocean you know we've still got a long way to go um, after the February show this year um, I was contacted um, and we are now one of the six um, one of the six top brands in the world um, on wiki video uh, which is on our website for being one of the innovative voices of fashion and I absolutely love that terminology they've used it's like you know I want my designers to be seen I want them to be heard but as you know it's not just about designers now it's now morphing into creative 
creative. So that's why I always refer to them as creative. So it's the designers, it's the models, it's hair and makeup, it's amazing hosts like yourself, yeah. music artists, those who have got a product or brand or service that they want to promote. It can be anything. It's like we've had robots, as you know, we've had yeah. sugar companies, we've had mineral water, we've had PR companies, other PR companies have come on board as well to promote their brand. Yeah. So this is a platform for everybody. Obviously, you know, j- jumping, you know, on, on the tails of fashion, because I really feel that fashion is one medium that really gets out there and is very powerful, more powerful than TV, film and music, in my opinion. Maybe it's a bit biased, but it, it's just something, you know, that can actually, you know, shock or get people to pay attention. Yeah. Now, sure. you, when you when you came back in September 2017 and, and I got you to host um, the show, um, that's when I went on record about domestic violence. Yeah. So it was, through, it was through fashion we highlighted domestic violence. Um, and we had some very senior officers, uh, officers, sorry, from the Metropolitan Police and also from our UK government who actually watched the show. Um, they were there for the afternoon segment where, you know, we um, d- did the domestic violence, which was, and we used the soundtrack, I'm Only Human. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they said they've never seen anything presented or portrayed about domestic violence like this. So th- th- they were very happy and they were very impressed with it because people will write articles, people will do a documentary, but we did this through fashion. You know, in September 2019, we did something on endometriosis. A lot of young women are suffering from uh, endometriosis and, you know, normally it would be women in, in the 30s and I'm going back 10 years ago. Now it's actually affecting young girls from the age of 15, 16 upwards, um, which can cause uh, severe pain, infertility, and various other issues. And, and it's become a very serious problem. So, you know, we highlighted that through fashion. We also highlighted, as you know, Robots on the Runway, September 2018, uh, which was in collaboration with Omni Labs and the amazing designer, Hone, who's based in Los Angeles herself, you know, showing how the, the, the love, the collaboration, the marriage, the dependency on technology. Can we live with it? Can we live with technology? Can we live without it? It was to highlight that. There were very mixed reviews which was fantastic because it was great publicity. Some people loved it, some people didn't get it, some people hated it, but it caused people to talk so much that we ended up on BBC Mainstream News. At n- on, on, it was on a, a Sunday, nine o'clock at night. I got a phone call from one of my heads of production, put on BBC One Now, Savita, and I went, why? She says, House of Icons, Hone and Omni Labs robots are, are actually, on, they're discussing you guys right now. And oh my God. Wow. Um, but, so that was amazing. And BBC World covered it and I think it hit over 400 million viewers. It was crazy, absolutely crazy. Well, would you, so Sab, like the industry you're in is massively competitive. Yeah. So you, would you say then you constantly have to come up with current circumstances circumstances and situations within humanity and across the globe and demonstrate that and showcase that in in a in a fashion a live emotional um catwalk type of show is that is that how you stand out uh, amongst everybody i think it's my personal experiences and my you know my creative's personal experiences it's not just right okay we're doing a show let's have a look at your collection um it's not just that you know i'd like to get to know the creative inside and out you know when someone creates something whether it be an oil painting or whether it be a, a music track or, or anything, it comes from the heart. Everything is dictated by emotion. And some of our creators, when you hear their life stories, their backstories of their struggles and the beauty that comes out of this horror that they've gone through okay. or the turmoil that have gone through, it's absolutely amazing. These are works of art that are hitting the catwalk. The music artists are works of art that are performing. It's that basically. Um, in terms of this wasn't all premeditated oh I'm going to hit all these buttons in terms of diversity and this and bring up issues it just evolved and happened I mean to talk about domestic violence it was the one of the most hardest things I had to do yeah I bet when we were doing the rehearsals and I'm not ashamed to admit it and as the track goes I'm only human I don't know how many times I cried backstage when we were doing the rehearsals and you know I even said to you know um, our models I said if anyone ever looks at you the wrong way I said just call me and I will be there and I will sort them out you know because I, I, yeah. I treat all the models like my babies basically like my children and yeah. it was absolutely heartbreaking and it was from there I, I realized that this particular issue of domestic violence and abuse it's not something that, that does not go on in the fashion industry 50 women came forward that night these were a mixture of our models designers hair and makeup artists and including guests sitting in the audience wow the amount of messages emails you know 
I got, you know, phone calls, etc. I was literally in floods of tears the next day reading all, all these emails. There was one model, which I will not mention her name. She said, we had no idea what what this was, what you guys were doing. We were just right. standing there and watching the TV screen backstage and they'd all lined up for our grand opening. And she said, when you spoke, she said, I felt I wasn't alone. She said, the noise in my head actually stopped at that point. She said, I have been threatened to be cut up into tiny pieces. I get beaten up constantly. When I see all these beautiful models, my peers who I walk on the catwalk with, I feel so alone. I feel so abnormal. And she said, for the first time, you've actually made me feel normal and human. And that's what I said in my speech. If I could help one person out, just one person, or yeah. even to inspire them, or even for them to pick up that phone to, to get help or to take that step, because the first step is the hardest. And I know this from personal experience. If I could inspire that one person to take that first step, to, to, to get help or to come out of that situation. Whatever I've been through, I take that as a blessing. I'm glad I went through those uh, experiences of abuse. I'm glad I, I went through horror because I, I ended up helping this one person. It was worth it. That's how I feel. That's my opinion. Yeah, for sure. So, look, obviously, and, you... Go on, what were you going to say? And and going back to the diversity and everything else, it's like, you know, you, you watch, you know, you see in the news, the media, you know, films, TV, music videos, you know, they have their, you know, the standard size, you know, female figure or the standard size male figure, you know, um, even down to, you know, hair type, et cetera. You know, seeing some of these very, very talented models or, you know, um, trying to, to make their mark or to get out there, they're being rejected because of the color of the skin or their hair type or the shape of their figure and so on and so forth. And I'm sitting there thinking, you're, you're, you're so beautiful. This is insane. You know, even when it came down to sort of like transsexuals, transgenders, uh, you know, gender fluid, finally, it's like, oh, no, no, you know, that's not the industry standard. Uh, why? Are they not human? Yeah. Why not? You know, they're, they're, they look absolutely magnificent. Let's get them onto the runway. And I'm so proud of the fact that, you know, we've had such diversity on our runway. It took me two years, Johnny, to convince a plus, and I hate using this word plus size, and you can quote me on this, a plus size designer to hit our runway because plus size designers shy away from fashion shows and they said no we don't think we're worth it and I said are you crazy the the market out there is magnificent I mean you would be making money because you've got the industry standard sizes out there not every woman is a size zero not every woman is a size four to six you know women come in all beautiful shapes and sizes let's yeah. celebrate this and we managed to get our first plus size designer only in february 2019 and they did fantastic oh my god the uproar it was absolutely amazing and um you know and and since then we have been you know constantly promoting and pushing that diversity you know into our shows as well i mean what we were supposed to have a, an amazing plus size designer in february this year but unfortunately due to personal circumstances she couldn't fly over Gotcha. Um, and um, we had hired all our beautiful curvy models and they said, oh, that means we're not doing the show. I went, oh, no, we are doing this segment. They said, <laughs> what are you planning? And I said, right. I said, I want you to wear something that inspires you, that make, makes you feel powerful and beautiful. I don't care what it is, whatever makes you feel powerful and confident when you're out there. And they went, okay. And then basically we used the track by Beyond, um, Destiny's Child and uh, thank you to Beyonce for this, uh, Bootylicious, because <laughs> I remember one of her interviews they actually questioned her about the song. She said, well, I gained a bit of weight and I was eating a bit of fried chicken. You know, she's my type of girl because I love fried chicken too. <laughs> and um, she said, I put on a bit of weight. She said, but who cares? And she said, I wanted to celebrate my bit. And that's what I spoke to these amazing, beautiful, talented models. I said, this is the reason behind, behind the track. And they and I said, I want you, for the first time ever on my run, I said, I want you to dance. I want you to give it your all, pose, do whatever you want. Because normally I'm quite strict with the other models. Do not smile. Do not do this. You know, this is like, I went, no, we're going to celebrate beauty in all of its form. And then I stormed the runway with them. Amazing. And, you know, and we interviewed them as well. And everybody loved it. And I mean, you know, with the song, you know, with Bootylicious, it is a track where you just want to get up and dance and Sunita Simon Carroll's very good friend was sitting front row and I could see her from the corner of my eye so like bopping along to the song and I thought fantastic you know everyone loved it we all celebrated it welcome to America's next investment a new era of investing hi guys it's Johnny Pash here again and I'm back this time to host a brand new show with a brand new podcast for America's next investment. 
A&I podcast series is where companies can gain exposure, brand awareness, and promote their capital raise. A&I podcast viewers will also have the opportunity to invest in companies featured on the A&I podcast. So make sure you stay tuned for America's Next Investment podcast show. Check out americasnextinvestment.com for the latest air dates and times. If you're a company and you want to be featured on the a and podcast series, contact us today. Details can be found on our show notes page at the a and website. I'm Johnny Pash and stay tuned for America's Next Investment podcast series. I absolutely love it. And do you know what? Just listening to yourself, just talking on and recapping about the shows. Um, it's all about a House of Icons family. That's what it is. You're mm. in, in different genres, different race, races, ages, different skill sets, creativity, uh, music even. And it's just bringing it under one house and everybody is part of the same family. That's what it is. Yeah. I, I think this playground is big enough for everybody to, you know, to play in, to work in. And, you know, regardless what product, brand or service you are, and, you know, you're, you know, as I said, fashion is a great medium to, to get that exposure out because people will remember, you know, yeah, cool. you, you could, you know, you, you could have a tech company, for example. And if they wanted to, people remember, oh, yeah, that tech company was, you know, at that fashion show. They will remember it because we try to bring a lot of laughter and entertainment um, into the show as well. Yes, we want people to, to, to see the, uh, the new designs and, and fashion from around the world. But we want the guests and the media and press to enjoy the show. It's not, oh, it's another boring fashion show. We've got to see these models walk up and down. No, we want to bring that buzz into it yeah, so people yeah. actually enjoy it and they remember it. And, they, and, you know, some of our guests, they've been so loyal. They've been coming in season in and season out and they will remember. They'll remember better than me. Right. The, do you remember that designer from 2016 suite that you showcased and they Okay, and they will describe the outfit down to a T, and I'm thinking, wow. So that within itself is a big accolade, a very big accolade. Yeah, like you said earlier, it's not it's it's kind of like it's kind of like watching a real life TV. You've got that emotional attachment to the models and the whole synchronization and the fashion itself. It's just it's a gripping emotion when you're there, isn't it? I mean, we had a reality TV show that filmed the uh, February show, and it's going to be aired on Amazon Prime. Obviously, yeah. there's delays because of this wonderful COVID nineteen era that we live in right now. Um, yeah. But but they wanted to be part of the House of Icons experience, and um, we were part of the reality TV. TV show so we really? have like other cameramen you know filming and everything it was all crazy but it was all good fun absolutely fantastic and yeah. they are coming yeah. back so once everything has gone gone back to semi-normal or whatever that is um they'll be back to um film uh, um house of icons uh, again which will be great and hopefully you'll be there johnny patch you know hosting well, for us love 100%. to get you on the reality tv show 100 percent. what am i missing out on here this is ridiculous i had no idea about this give them a I number i know so yeah so you know that, that, that's what's sort of like you know happening from our end but the industry is not easy I was um, it, about this I was literally gonna ask you like it's it's constantly evolving and changing so you have to obviously keep up with the times but don't limit your creativity um and your your difference within the catwalk shows but um where do you kind of see it heading next year many years to come and yeah how do you kind of how do you get through the challenges and what are your challenges wow okay so um constantly keeping up with the times um you know working very closely with the creatives you know in terms of what they want to highlight out to the world and uh, the more diverse it is the more different it is um the better it, it is for them so you know they will be remembered you know they you know they've got this platform and you know their collection becomes iconic people will remember them and buy off them or they end up going off to do bigger and better things as you already know um yeah. in in terms of um the challenges um it's been unfortunate and it still happens you know um you know being a single mum being a woman of color that goes on day in and day out even today and i'm thinking yeah. really the color of my skin really matters 
you know, here's an audit trail of my work. Does it really matter what color my skin is? I could be pink with, you know, green spots for God's sake, you know? But, you know, that is always highlighted. What's this woman of color, single, you know, single mother, you know, this pathetic excuse of domestic abuse victim, you know, doing? And they, those were the things I spoke vocally at the September 2017 show. And the, the funny thing is, is that those people who had criticized me on all those levels actually turned up and they bought tickets for Front Row VIP. Gotcha. So when I went on stage, I never rehearse anything. Johnny, you know this as well. I do not rehearse. I just go out and I just speak and, and I do it from the heart. And I went on stage and I, I, and exactly. And I just glance, you know, you just glance at the audience, but then I focused on the VIP sort of like uh, guest list on my left hand side. I went, okay, let's do this. So I did. I spoke, you know, I'm still here. You know, we've launched, you know, we had launched in six cities at that time. Um, you know, I'm still here. Um, but you know, it's unfortunate that people do not celebrate each other's successes. It doesn't happen. Unfortunately, um, I'm the first one to jump up and down for, for someone, you know, you know, who gets a, a big movie break or a TV break or an editorial shoot, et cetera, et cetera, or gets stopped in the department stores. But they will do everything in their power to tear you down and they'll use all sorts of excuses to do it. And it still happens today. I, I face this every single... Jealousy, because they don't understand why, you know, oh, why are they doing so well? Why is this creative doing better? Why is this fashion house doing better? I don't understand it. I'm too simple-minded. I just believe we should all celebrate each other's successes. And if I'm nice to you, you're nice back to me. We treat each other with respect, you know, not because of how much money we've got in our pocket or, or what we wear, because we're just simple human beings. Yeah. But that just doesn't happen. And it still continues. And it is very, very sad. And again, I'm only human at the end of the day. I've had my moments where I've sat in, in the corner and cried my eyes out and thinking, why? Why are you jealous? You know, I'm still a tiny drop in the ocean and... The market, the platform is big enough for everybody to celebrate and do your own thing. I have a completely different business model. My creatives have individual different business models. Why do you get satisfaction from tearing someone down? Because they're not financially gaining from it. They just want to stand there and just laugh and say, yes, we've torn this person down. Or we've insulted this person because of the, the, the because of their height or their size or the color of their skin or, you know, the, you know um, gender preferences, etc. It's absolutely awful. Absolutely awful. It can be a very fickle industry at times. How do you, what do you do? Just ignore the naysayers and crack on? Uh, I try to, but again, we're only human and we all have emotions. So I'm constantly reflecting and restructuring in my head. What do I need to do now? Um, You know, I used to be quite proactive in doing things. I am when it comes to the shows and production, don't get me wrong. Um, But when it comes to um, who's in my team, who I associate, with so on and so forth I'm now stopping pausing reflecting and then taking that one step and I'm very cautious with that step um you know I've got another amazing client that has come on board and she's got nothing to do with the fashion industry at all and you know she's worried going into the public eye and I gave her my own experiences I explained to her what you know I've been through going through etc and I said you know at the moment these these individuals won't come after you or, or try and tear you down because nobody knows what you're up to but when you do go out there they're going to do everything in their power to tear you down and you need to be mentally strong enough to deal with this and I said it's not easy it is hard but you have to remember one thing I have a goal to achieve it's going to hurt me with all this rubbish that goes on but I have to stay completely focused it's like training at the gym you have to be uh, focused. You, you you need to be dedicated. It's exactly that same thing. We can, it will hurt, but you've got to push forward. Absolutely. We, we can definitely, we're going to delve into more, because I really want you to give over your experience and knowledge within the industry for anybody looking to break into the fashion world. And I definitely want to touch on that during the end of the interview. But um, mm. tell me, so we're obviously in isolation at the moment, and mm. we we were supposed to have the show in September. So how yes. is the whole London Fashion Week industry going to evolve with that? Well, what are we going to do? Right. So um, British Fashion Council they normally hold a, a Men's Fashion Week um, mid June, so yeah. their show's twelfth of June this year, and it's over a five day period. So they've renamed it from Men's Fashion Week to London Fashion Week. So they're going to incorporate okay. men and women's wear for the very first time. Right. So they're doing 
doing this through interviews, podcasts, and presentation. And this was something that we were looking into mid-March when all the madness of COVID started to affect this side of the world. Yes. And I've been dealing with COVID crisis since end of January, to tell you the Gaza truth, because we had uh, officials from China had supported um, a group of uh, amazing Chinese designers to exhibit with us, which was our big solo segment in February. Just to get the shipment over to London was a nightmare. The shipment oh, literally right. arrived 48 hours before the show. Right. It was like we were praying to all the guards and energy, positive energies were going out and everything else just to get this collection here. It, it was an absolute nightmare. So I've been dealing with, with this issue then. But then when it started to spread and when it affected Milan and, and Paris Fashion Week in February, New York and London were very lucky when we did our shows to tell you the guards on this truth. So, it, you know, I've been, you know, been talking to our vendors, speaking to, you know, the directors of the venue that we do the show with and everything else. And we're all hoping that this nightmare would have come and gone by May, June. This was back in middle March. Um, obviously not. And uh, we need to abide by, you know, what the uh, uh, government guidelines are, which we're all waiting here in the UK, but also the government yeah. guidelines globally, because, you know, we're a global show exactly. with travel restrictions and so on and so forth. So, you know, I've been speaking with my team and with my tech guys as well, and we are going to go virtual. <laughs> so what we're doing, and you're involved in this, Mr. Patch, or should I say the Passionator, um, we're going to do the virtual show. So we are, the, the designers that have signed for September already, we've moved them to the live show in February, but we're giving them a two-in-one, basically. We are still going to promote our brands that were supposed to launch in September. Um, we'll do this virtually, but we're also promoting brands who have been with us in the past and we're also going to be promoting them as well. We're also going to be promoting every single key member of House of Icons. We're, we, we're also promoting our key um, models as well. Um, you know, one of our top celebrity photographers, Mark Gunter, I've yeah. already said to him, I know you hide behind the camera, but I need to get you in front of the camera because I need a quick interview. And he just laughed. He said, okay, not a problem. So this is what we're doing. So I want to push as many brands as possible during this live stream that we're going to do in September. Right. So, And I think that will be absolutely brilliant because we want to keep, obviously, yes, house of icons we want to keep a market presence out there but most importantly that supersede that is to get all the brands to stay out there to keep them in the public eye and yes, yes it's going to be very very different i mean like obviously when you go to a live you know event whether it be a fashion show or trade show or music concert that buzz is amazing yeah. you're there you're live I but how we're going to recreate a buzz like this virtually, I don't know. <laughs> but we are going to do this. But we are going to still do all the pre-press. We're going to do our normal iconic buzz that we normally do in July, August, um, that will be showcasing virtually with us in September. And that is still going to go out um, as planned. And then after that, we're going to still going to be creating that buzz after the show with media and press. So nothing right. really changes in terms of the promotion. It's just, yes, it will be virtual. Okay, we're all going to collaborate and do our own individual things so i'm yeah presumably, i'm gonna be wearing my lovely suit standing in my back garden and present you can change you can as change as many times as you want you know good you idea stand, you could stand in t-shirt and shorts for, for one segment with a cocktail right. in your hand and all you can just you know be there in a, in a tuxedo or uh, an amazing three-piece um suit whatever you want Perfect. not a problem great let's do that and then i'm presumably gonna film it or get my fiance to film me on the phone <laughs> Yep. and present it that way. I, I yes. Got, this is going to be... This will be absolutely fantastic. And we've advised our creators as well that, you know, have things in the background with, you know, with your logo or mannequins or, you know, <laughs> if you're a painter or a book writer, to, to have that all on display so that basically we're promoting everything. Amazing stuff. Do you think your competitors are kind of catching on to having the same idea? I think so. I mean, um, the, uh, someone in America has released this as the Digital International Fashion Week. So they're getting, you know, like Swimwear Fashion Week, Bridal Fashion Week, you know, all the other four Fashion Weeks, etc. can use their platform to showcase. So that is something we are contemplating as well because it will run live via our website and our uh, social media. But we're looking at different platforms as well um, to actually uh, live stream it. So it'll all go out at the same time on various platforms. Amazing. I, I had uh, a couple of really good Johnny Pash style ideas. I could come on at one segment and do the kick up challenge with the toilet roll. And then... Yep. <laughs> And then I can do the uh, the other the press up the twenty five press up challenge and then present the show that way. So yeah, there's some cool stuff that we can do here, and I will happily give you my energy and Johnny Pash spin on everything. I'm loving it already. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm gonna give this some thought. We'll have some major brainstorming. <laughs> um, right. So look, this is all amazing in regards to House of Icons. 
let, tell me what's the what's been the absolute highlight so far with House of Icons. What what's one memory that really sticks in there for you? Okay, the one memory that will stick in my head is when I broke my shoulder in Abu Dhabi, and I and I came back with a broken <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> and six weeks before the September 2018 show, I had to be operated on, so I had a metal plate in my shoulder. And we were doing robots on the runway for Hone and Omni Labs at the time, and my team sort of like That's obviously they felt they felt bad for me. They were oh, poor thing. You, you got a the shoulder. Me. So they said, yeah. So they said, is it because you wanted to keep up with the theme of the show yeah. and you wanted to have a metal plate in your body? And I went, you know, that that did make me laugh. I was in excruciating pain, so I had to organise the show, uh, director, etc., in a sling six weeks after my operation. So when uh, the host that we had um, at that time, Franco Mabata, he flew in from the Philippines, and um, I said to him backstage, I said, just take the Mickey out of me about my broken. He said, but I can't. He said, you, you, you're in so much pain. I can tell you're in pain because I was just knocking back painkillers as if they were smarties at that point. Uh -huh. And um, I said, just, 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 just rip the Mickey out of me. It's fine. Don't worry. And we joked about my metal shoulder. So that it has to be the. Even though I was in pain, um, it was a funny moment for me. And it, and I thought, do you know what? If I could pull a show off with a broken shoulder with a piece of metal in my shoulder, I can do anything. <laughs> Fair play to you. Absolutely love that. I um, what's what's a moment that sticks in there for you? Like uh, with myself hosting, what what what's maybe something that I've done and you just thought, oh my god, did Johnny just do that? But great, you pulled it off. It's it's everything about you. It's like when you hit the stage, all of, all of, you don't see this because I'm watching backstage on the big TV screen. So I'm watching the media, the press, the guests, everyone. Right, and right. it's the way you actually command the audience. You you get them interested. You get them laughing. You know, you'll come out and you'll do your little sexy dance on the runway and, and everything else. on the bum. Little spin, everything. It's like the, the crowd just loves it. And you really know how to draw them in. You get them involved in what's Definitely. happening. So anything you do, with it, whether you're hosting on TV or when you're doing live events such as House of Icons, you, you pull the crowd in, which is great. You're, you, you know, you can really connect with them. And yeah, I think that's, that's absolutely it, yeah. fantastic. And it's very rare as well. I've not seen that with many presenters, um, even with famous ones, to say the God and she's you really know how to do that. Yeah, maybe a Dermot O'Leary, but... Dermot, I, I, like I said, not many. Dermot, I love Dermot. Dermot O'Leary, I've met him. He's lovely. Oh, really? Mm. Mm. I'm, I met him, when was this? This was in uh, Dubai, August 2014. And No, sorry, August 2013, sorry. And they were doing the judges' houses and Nicole Scherzinger was um, in Dubai. We didn't know this. I remember sort of like walking past Dermot, this is by the pool, and I sort of like swung around and I had this big massive hat swung on these massive shades on. I went up to him and I said, you're Dermot O'Leary. And he went, mm, yeah. I said, oh, let me take a picture. So I took a picture of him and the producer at the time. And um, I kept asking him, I said, come on, tell me, tell me, who's, who's the celebrity judge? He said, oh, I can't say anything. I can't say anything. And so we went to one of the restaurants in the hotel. And um, this was at the Jumeirah um, Al Zarai in Dubai. Beautiful on the palm. You have to go. And we were sitting, I was sitting there with my friend and, and with the kids. And uh, I said to her, I said, I'm going to chat up one of the waiters. They know what's going on. She said, oh, don't. And you know what I'm like? Johnny. Once I've got to be in my body, I'm just going to... So I started flirting and started chatting with one of the waiters. And he said, oh, it's that show of yours, you know, um, that famous show, singing show. I went, go on, tell in their broken up English. I said, oh, come on, come on, tell me, tell me. And they said, oh, it's x -Fact. I said, well, I kind of knew that anyway. And I said, do you know who it is? He said, oh, it's a very pretty woman. I went, okay. And I thought, who could it be? Who could it be? Anyway, cutting a long story short, I had to go back to... We had to go back to our rooms. And I just said to my friend, I said, look, I'm, I'm just going to take my little monster out. My son at the time, he was only six. I uh, said, so I just want to check out a few bits and pieces and find out where the ice cream parlor was. So I walked out, there was Nicole walking past. And there's another funny story, another funny story. So I shouted out, Nicole, she turned around. And I said, I am dying to get a picture of you and my little boy. And she went, why? I said, when I was heavily pregnant with this child, he would always kick to your song, Buttons, you know, from um, Pussycat Doll. Yeah. And she laughed her head off. And I said, and I have to thank you for the track you did with P. Diddy, Come To Me. And she went, why? I said, my child would scream scream his head off day and night as soon as I put that song on he calmed down I had your video recorded and every time he kicked off I had your video on he calmed down I've even really? got you know your track in my car everything I said even from milk to solids you helped me and she loved it and I said he's been a fan since pregnancy so she took a picture with him 
and um, it was kind of cute. And uh, you know, one of her sisters says, "Do you want to get in the pitch?" I went, "No, no, no. This is a moment for my son and Nicole Scherzinger." So for two years after that, because she kissed him on the head, bless her. She was so she's so beautiful. It's ridiculous in real life. Honest to God, she's so yeah. beautiful. And uh, my son thought he was married to her for two years until he was eight years old. He thought he was married to Nicole Scherzinger. It was so cute. <laughs> So um, I, I have Joe that when he does come home with his girlfriend, it, well, this is the standard. If you ah. don't meet to the standard, thank Amazing you and goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. You know, we um, you've obviously brushed shoulders with a lot of celebrities. We we obviously we had Woody Harrelson and Wesley Snipes at the LA show. Yes, we did. Um, uh, you know, I, I briefly saw uh, Woody and uh, and you know Wesley. I had a good sort of like ten fifteen minute conversation with. Yeah, he's Ab cool. absolutely lovely both men absolutely lovely very down to earth and you know Wesley Snipes' feedback as well on, on you know on that day he said um, you know not seen anything like this before it's really great that you're getting the emerging brands out there and you know um, when I flew out to LA a couple of months after the February 2015 show I actually met up with um, Wesley's manager so you know we met up and right. we had a coffee and everything so it was just nice just to just to catch up it wasn't business it was just basically just to catch up excellent we need to do another LA show what do you think could do but, but do you know what just let me make you laugh London is the most diverse city in the world in terms of everything and anything yeah whether it be the arts fashion music blah 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 and we're more embracing to, to different things from different cultures and you'll never get that in any city in the world Got you. and um, we've had a big influx of designers from America coming into London because as soon as they do the London show they go back home then all of a sudden bang they're yeah. you know they are something they become someone just by having London behind them that they just did a, a, a you know a show in London it could be a big event it could be a small event in London but it has helped them a great deal and they said that we've got more publicity and more recognition just doing a London show than we've done on our homegrown shows I mean even Honey went on record with BBC World as well saying that she loves coming to London to Europe because we embrace you know the, yeah, the British right. do embrace well so look, I, I obviously want to kind of give back as much as I can to our listeners and um, and look with your experience and everything that you've done and the amount of shows that you've you've put together which is just astronomical like firstly how do you even get the mindset and and get into the whole realization that you've got to create a fashion show with this many models and this many people watching and like how does it all come together how do you even plan for something like that well we always plan so like you know a year in advance and obviously with this season in september we've had to obviously change track very quickly and dramatically but you know we're already putting plans in for you know uh, february and september 2021 mm -hmm. um it's it's the excitement the adrenaline rush it's like you know when i'm connecting with the creatives and talking to them and everything else my team have said you know this is going to be next to impossible in the next three or four years for you to speak to every single creative and i said yeah i know but you know uh, we need to understand them i'd like to understand them, so if i have to pass them on to you know someone from our production team that's not a problem but we've got to understand that even ethos and everything about them yeah um, but it is the excitement and the adrenaline rush of putting it together you know even to the point i've had to crash course a lot of things from a technical point of view like with my stage team they're absolutely amazing i do love them i've just said to them i said don't talk to me technically talk to me in baby language because i'm really thick when it comes to techie stuff to tell you the gods and it's true um even getting my head around zoom johnny patch you know you just about got my head around that now um <laughs> I, I i just love it but then on the day of the show well on the day of fittings which is on the Friday and I think I, I'm even worse than what I was before in 20 when, when we last did the show in 2017 I'm on autopilot I'm like I have no emotion I have no feeling in my whole body yeah. my feet will be hurting my knees everything you know no two hours sleep on Friday maybe two hours sleep on the Saturday night because I'm doing the big children's show on the Sunday and then when it's Sunday evening it's like that's when my my emotions and my body catches up and then I can't move I mean with the February show that just happened um this will make you laugh so we did the children's show and did all the running around and so three days of madness sat in a bath all of a sudden it hit me i went oh my god i can't move my feet are killing me oh my god my knees hurt everything hurt and um it, I, I was a real pathetic state sitting in the bar and i'm excited like every season so i think people should just come and see me on, on the sunday night at the bar of the venue How pathetic <laughs> I look. So i'm just sitting there and, I, and you know I'm, I'm saying to you so like you know my, my production team i can't move and they said look to me we're just going to go and get some kfc i said oh can you give me some wings I can't move I can't walk and it's literally not even a two minute walk from the venue it's ridiculous can't move can't move so they went to KFC came back it was me